Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. This is the fourth video in a series of videos of how to play Global War 1936 to 1945. Uh, this is the second part in this series on, um, uh, on units. I guess you could call it the third part if you count the facilities. So anyway, today we're going to talk about our armor class units. Um, now, when you think of armor class units, you're thinking of tanks, right? And that's that's true. There's tanks, but there's also more than that. Um, anything, basically anything that uh, that is a vehicle on the ground that isn't artillery or anti-aircraft uh, is in the armor class, and, and I'll go through all of them. Um, so let's start off with um, your basic unit. It's kind of like your regular infantry. Before I do, let me just show you this. So there's your card there. This is the Germany card. And I'm gonna show you the German uh, armor units because they have a, a, a couple of extra units. So, and then you look on the back here, uh, that's where all the units are and it's gonna give you the costs and what they do and things like that. Uh, I wanna point you to this thing right here, SS Panzer Grenadiers. Now those are infantry, but they're mechanized infantry. So I'm using an infantry sculpt but um, it, it is actually mechanized infantry. And I just wanted to point that out there. So let's just get to it now. Okay, let's talk about uh, tanks to begin with. So your, your regular tank, uh, one that you're used to using in Axis and Allies is, is a medium tank. Um, and uh, it's, it's very similar in this game. Um, it has blitz ability. Here, let me just get it out here. So. It's a standard core level M armored formation in World War II. It has uh, the blitz ability, like I said. It may move through an enemy zone where there is no land units and attack an adjacent zone. So that's, that's what you're used to when you're thinking of blitz, right? Um, or uh, following a battle that lasted three rounds or less, your surviving tanks may continue attacking a new zone after all initial combat has been resolved if they have sufficient movement points remaining. Um, it, can, it constitutes a second combat movement only for blitzing units. So your mechanized infantry can pair one-to-one -one with an armor if they have a mo movement remaining as well. Um, and it's, it's resolved immediately. Like when you wouldn't wait for uh, all the other attacks to be done. If you went and you blitzed through something, then you would continue on or stop. It's your choice. Like it, you can't continue on later, right? Like, oh, you see how your other attacks went, and then, okay, well, maybe I will bless them. No, you have to keep going with those units, right? Um, and also, your fighters and tactical bombers can take part in that. So, let me just show you how that might work here. Let's just uh, grab a couple of other units here. So, let's say that, um, let's just move this stuff back over here. We'll get into blitzing more later, but we're just gonna start here. So uh, we got your, your medium tank, right? And let's say we have a mechanized infantry as well. And let's throw in a fighter there. So these guys all come in and they attack this guy, right? And they, everybody rolls the dice and they get a hit. Uh, let's, let's actually throw in, throw in a, a, an infantry there as well, just to show you how some people don't move on. Okay, so let's say they get a hit and then this guy doesn't hit back. So he gets removed, the piece of pie goes down, and then these guys have a choice, do I wanna keep going? And they say yes, so the fighter can keep going if he still has movement points left and he can still land safely, right? Like if he, if he already moved a bunch of spaces and now by coming down here, he can't land anywhere, then no, he can't do that. But because he has movement points left, and these things here, let, you know what, let's, uh, before we move on, let's just put another mechanized infantry in there. So let's say you brought in two mechanized infantry in a tank. When you blitz on, you can only take them one to one. So one tank, one mechanized infantry, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so there we go. So now these guys can attack this guy and they take him out and you put your piece of pie down there. So that's blitzing in this game. It's like before where uh, you could have uh, blitzed you, you, you could have blitzed through this space to get to this space if it was empty, or 
uh, you could, uh, as long as it took less than three rounds of combat, you could take this guy out and then come down and take and take this other one out. With your tanks, your mechanized infantry, and your fighters and tactical bombers. So that's your medium tank, and it's uh, um, the numbers are similar uh, as they are in, in Global 40, and uh, you will hear me reference Global 40 a lot because I assume that most players like me are going to come to this game from that game. So bear with me if, if you didn't, but uh, I, I, I know that most people that are going to take this game up came from there. So it's going to cost um, six IPP, so six bucks. It's going to move to, um, it's going to attack at six, and it's going to defend at five. And so that's on a 12-sided dice. So that's like a three and a two and a half on a six-sided dice, right? So attack at six and defend at five. And that's a medium tank. Okay, so let's move on to, let's talk about light tanks here. Mm -hmm. So then you got your light tank. And uh, a light tank uh, also goes two spaces. It only costs four IPP. Um, and it's actually pretty useful. It, it, it attacks at four and it defends at three and it moves two. So it, it's a pretty good unit if you don't have a tank. Uh, it's better than an infantry, right? Um, Unless, of course, you're, you're transporting across water because uh, you, you need those infantry, you need those marines to, to amphibious assault, right? But other than that, like if you're using them on land, then these, these light tanks are, are pretty darn useful. Uh, they attack at four, which is like a, a two on a six-sided dice, and it only costs four. It costs the same as a specialty infantry. So those are, are really useful to have, those light tanks. Um, then you have your heavy tanks. This, uh, this for the Germans is um, uh, Tiger One, um, and uh, most heavy tanks in the game are going to um, cost eight IPP, and they're going to attack at two, um, or sorry, they're going to attack at um, eight and defend at seven. Uh, and but you have to develop heavy armor as well. So whatever your tanks cost, and I know Japanese tanks cost more. Whatever your tanks cost, you add you have to add two to the cost of that. So the Japanese heavy tanks going to cost a little bit more. But you first have to develop heavy armor. That's number three up there, heavy armor. Um, and once you've developed heavy armor, then you can then you can start purchasing these. Now this tank here, this particular tank was better, was probably the best heavy tank that was used in World War II. So its numbers are slightly better. Instead of being eight and seven, attack at eight and defend at seven, it attacks at eight and it defends at eight. So that's a little bit better for them. Um, and yeah, man, those are useful. <laughs> I was playing a game there and you, you're only building one a turn. Like you, you can't just, you can't just put a stack of them on, right? You, you can only build one a turn. Uh, but yeah, you just you just uh, mow down the defense. Um, that's like rolling a four instead of rolling, a, a, you know, on a six-sided dice when you're rolling an eight like that. Um, now these other ones here, um, this is a tank destroyer. And I, I didn't punch up the numbers for this one because this isn't part of the regular game. Uh, I'm, I haven't added it to the game, to my game yet, because... Uh, I'm not ready for that yet. I, I want to learn how to play the game a little better. Then I'm going to add extra units in. But this one here is a tank destroyer, and it's got less armor, but it's got a heavy gun on it. So it attacks very well, but it's not going to defend very well, right? And it's going to have target selection. And I, I forgot to mention that as well. Um, uh, this, uh, this heavy tank has a, a, a target selection of one. So if you roll a one, you get to choose your own casualty. It's not the defender that gets to take his weakest unit off. You're the one choosing your own casualty. And also, um, uh, the medium armor that I showed you there, uh, uh, it would uh, also get target selection if it was defending in a city as well. But uh, we went through the city rules earlier when uh, the video called The Map. So I refer you back to that one to, to see exactly uh, what the difference is with the terrain, the different types of terrain when you have these types of, uh, the various types of units. And so those are the, the, the different kind of tanks that we have. Now here we have motorized infantry. Now, the biggest question that I had in my mind when I first started buying this game, and when I say buying, I mean searching for pieces. The biggest question I had in my mind was what the hell is the, the difference between motorized and mechanized infantry? 
because uh, to me, I didn't. <laughs> it just it, I I couldn't find anywhere that it really told you what the difference is. And finally, I came across someone uh, post on uh, a forum, and the person basically said, "Well, it, the difference is the motorized infantry has wheels, mechanized infantry has tracks, like a half track. This vehicle here has a is a half track, right?" Uh, whereas this one here is also a half track, but that's because I couldn't find any trucks with uh, w German trucks with wheels on them. I think I might have found some and, and I've ordered them, but when uh, you know, I'll have to see when they come in uh, if they're the right size or not. I know, for instance, like I ordered some really wicked Jeeps. They looked awesome on Shapeways until I got them, and they were tiny. Like I'm talking really, really tiny. <laughs> they were in, they were in danger of getting stepped on by the dudes and squashed. <laughs> I wondered why they were so cheap. Anyway, so hopefully those will pan out. But anyway, your motorized infantry and your mechanized infantry are completely different units. So your motorized, they represent just regular infantry that are support, supported by motorized transportation. Um, and they're identical to infantry except for their movement. Uh, like I, I showed you in the infantry class video what, what your regular infantry does all the numbers and everything. So yeah, they're exactly the same, except for the fact that they move two spaces. And um, and there's another thing too, like you can also tow your any, any artillery class unit. So that would be your artillery or your anti-aircraft gun. You can tow those units with you. Normally like an anti-aircraft gun or an artillery only goes one space. But with with uh, your motorized infantry, you can take it two spaces with you, okay? So that's a big advantage. Um, so yeah, either one of them. But that uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a great idea to uh, to 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 buy these one over the other, or to exchange them because another thing that you can do. And we talked about supply path when, when we did the video on um, infantry, or sorry, when we did the, the video on the map. So uh, your supply path is connected to a factory in your home country, and uh, that could go across oceans, you know, or it could uh, from naval base to naval base, or it could go along undamaged railway that either you own or somebody is, is allowing you to use. Um, Anywhere along that supply path, you can exchange any type of infantry that, that you have, any, any type of infantry sculpt that you have, for a motorized infantry uh, and pay one IPP. Uh, so that's handy, but at the same time, like I said, it it's, could be a good idea, but maybe it's not a good idea. Like if you wanted to eventually, excuse me, if you wanted to eventually get on a ship with uh, a transport, uh, naval transport with one of those, then it's not such a good idea. Or if you're going into mountains, not such a good idea. Then your mountain infantry is more important. You don't want to change him for the motorized infantry, right? So basically, this is this is a dude with a cool truck. Um, and he can also tow your artillery class units, which is really handy. Now, you got to differentiate that from the mechanized infantry. The mechanized infantry is a better fighter. Like uh, their numbers, uh, I just showed you the motorized. They're, they are two and four, just just like a, a, an infantry. They're an infantry that goes two spaces and can tow artillery. So the mechanized are three and four. So they're better at attacking. These guys are better at attacking. And also uh, from what I just showed you with the tanks, they can blitz with tanks. And that's a really, really big deal in this game. The ability to punch through the front line and get into the secondary units because quite often, of course, the a person puts their better units in behind the, the, the front lines, right? Well, if you can punch through there and get to those units in behind, then, uh, then that's a big advantage for you. So mechanized infantry becomes really important in a case like that, right? Okay, and then uh, there's a couple more kinds of mechanized infantry here. So this one here is uh, what you would uh, what you would use, or sorry, not what you would use. I'm using this. This is from the America game. This is the mechanized infantry from the America game. But like you could use a chip under one of these or something to signify one of these. This is if you develop 
advanced mechanized infantry on the the chart up there like i said you know you, you roll the dice and we'll, we'll have a video on that in the future on on all about uh, how to do all that okay so once you uh invent if you try just should decide to do that once you invent that then you can get these and they're the same as these except for better numbers right so uh let me just look here the advanced mechanized uh they attack at four and defend at five and they can blitz with armor at a two to one eight ratio so you can put two of these with one tank when you're blitzing like these are one to one these are two to one and these attack better so that's that's pretty damn good for these things like you you could really do some serious damage if you had advanced mechanized infantry now these guys that i showed you earlier here the ss panzer grenadiers they're also mechanized infantry and once uh, you get to January 1943, you can build two of these per turn. And their numbers are the same as this one here. Uh, except that it doesn't say anything about you being able to blitz two to one with a tank. But you can blitz with these. Uh, so like you can, you can blitz one to one with your SS Panzer Grenadiers. But yeah, they attack at four and defend at five and they move two spaces. So very powerful and only Germany gets these. Uh, nobody else has these. The other guys, they have to develop these things. So they got to spend money and get good luck and hopefully at one day, you know, get advanced mechanized infantry. These guys get them just because it's January of 1943. We, it's our turn. <laughs> okay, so what do we got left? Uh, only two things here, okay. Uh, there's these two things here. Okay, now we got cavalry. Uh, your cavalry piece here, and your um, your armored cars. Um, now these uh, cavalry pieces here, they're uh, they can also be like an infantry, and I didn't mention that in my infantry video, but I will be talking about it in the artillery video. Um, the, these can be upscaled in their attack by one uh, with uh, when they're paired one to one with artillery. So uh, normally they attack at three and they defend at two. So they don't defend as well as an infantry, but they attack better and they move twice as far, right? Because they move two spaces. They only cost three IPP, same as an infantry, um, but that you can pair them with an artillery. So then they would attack at four instead of three, right? So that's pretty good. So these are handy in their own case. And now these things here have exactly the same numbers. You know, like they cost three, they move two, they defend two, and they attack at three. So you got to wonder, okay, well, if this, but they don't pair with an artillery. You got to wonder, well, why would I ever buy one of these things if this one here does everything this one does, and I get to, uh, and I get to pair them with artillery. Plus, if you were using the Oil Wars expansion, um, this guy doesn't take oil. <laughs> You know, even though he's armor class unit, uh, you don't you don't feed a horse oil, right? Whereas this thing, you need oil to uh, to move that. So, um, so why would you ever buy one of these? So one of the rules that that I've been looking at uh, putting in, and I'm definitely going to try it. Uh, I didn't try these in my last game. I was just because this isn't part of the basic game here. This is just a, another unit that you can buy and add to the game, uh, armored cars and and it is an armor class unit. So I'm going to put that in the game and, and it's the same um, numbers as, as the, the cavalry here. So it'll attack at three and it'll defend it too. Um, but what these things were used for in World War II was as a scout vehicle. Like they would, they would ride ahead, like they were fast, right? And they were heavily armored, so, uh, but not, you know, not very strong as far as attacking. But so they, they, they could uh, run in um, and take a look and then run out again, right? Like they, they were just like your scouts uh, that you would have had a thousand years ago. You know, people that run ahead and find out where the enemy are. So why not use them for the purpose in this game that they were used for in the war? Um, use them as a scout. What I'm saying is that if you pair these one-to-one -one with an artillery or an armor unit, um, any one of the armor units, uh, then it, it, for the first round of attack, they will be plus one. So plus one on the artillery or plus one on your tank. Um, 
just 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 your tank so not not your other units and I'm just thinking of this right like uh, the, uh, I'm not sold on it or anything I know I do want to do something like that like I was gonna pair him one to one for the whole attack but I'm thinking let's just try the first round of attacks and we'll see how that works otherwise what's the point of me ever buying one of these things why not just buy horses <laughs> why not just buy dudes on horses right uh, so anyway I'm gonna try that I'm gonna try throwing that in there making this guy a scout and that is your armor class units. So, class dismissed.